Hey, it's Dave again, and we're on to the uh, fifth video on bloating. Two more to go after this one. And in this video, we're going to switch from talking about the bad stuff that gets into the system uh, that shouldn't really be there. And we're going to talk about some of the good stuff that can actually go missing. And I wanted to start actually with this idea of the digestive juices. And so um, how on earth could digestive juices that your body is supposed to be making contribute to uh, bloating and indeed other digestive symptoms? Um, well, it's kind of an indirect effect and it's very difficult to explain on just a single video. And uh, you know, my intention is to create videos on all of these different mini topics over time so that you can understand them all in, in more detail. But for now, let's just do a, a high level overview of, of digestive juices and, and link them back to this uh, rather embarrassing and unpleasant symptom of bloating. So in order to digest your food, you need several things to happen. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to put the food in your mouth and you've got to chew it. And one of the things that helps mix up the food and, and start the digestive process is saliva. We all know what saliva is. It's made in the salivary glands. It gets uh, uh, secreted into the oral cavity, into the mouth, and it contains certain enzymes that help you to begin breaking down some of the carbohydrate uh, foods that you're eating and also fats as well. And so you've got uh, salivary amylase is one of the enzymes that helps to break down carbohydrates and you've got salivary lipase or lipase that helps to break down your fats. So that digestive process begins chemically in your mouth as well as mechanically with you chewing your food. What I want to suggest straight away is one of the easiest things you can do if you have bloating initially or any form of digestive symptoms is sit down, relax and chew your food properly when you're eating. Don't eat on the go and bolt it down and dump big lumps of food into your stomach because that's going to create lots of stress and strain. And that in itself can lead to digestive symptoms, including bloating. So chew your food properly and allow your saliva to mix in with the food to help start and initiate the digestive process. The very act of chewing, as well as the smell, the sight, the imagination, the uh, anticipation of food, uh, creates increased saliva flow. So actually, we could say, we could easily write brain up here and say that the digestive process begins with the brain. Um, and if you don't sit down and focus on your food, relax, etc., you can actually stunt the production of all of these digestive juices. Once the food has been swallowed and it enters your stomach, you have stomach acid. So the cells in your stomach called parietal cells, they make a hydrochloric acid. And the purpose of the hydrochloric acid is um, to A, to, to help kill off bad bugs that shouldn't be uh, coming into your system in the food and water that you're consuming, um, but also to help you break down your food. And there's a very specific function that, that the acid performs, which is to take um, uh, a substance called pepsinogen and turn it into something called pepsin. And the pepsin is a very potent enzyme to help you break down and start to chop up all the proteins in the food that you've been uh, just eaten. So stomach acid activates pepsin and it digests food and kills bad bugs in its own right. You're supposed to have a lot of stomach acid. When it becomes depleted, that begins to cause problems because now you don't have this fiery acid bath to digest your food and kill off bad bugs. So you can kind of guess what happens. Um, sometimes the bugs can sneak through into the digestive system um, or the lower reaches of the digestive system, the intestines, and cause a whole bunch of problems that may culminate in bloating. Low stomach acid, whether that's caused by taking acid blocking drugs or whether it's caused by other factors such as stress or nutritional depletion from the substances that you need to make the hydrochloric acid like zinc, uh, vitamin B1, for example, um, once that stomach acid drops too low, then you're inviting bad bugs to overgrow. And this is shown in the research that there's a greater risk of certain types of digestive infections in the intestines when the stomach acid levels are not optimal. And so that's a really, really big one. Now, there's another factor with stomach acid that comes into play that's not talked about very often, which is that you need to have enough stomach acid to trigger the production and release, uh, particularly the release of pancreatic enzymes and bile. So once your stomach's done its job and that food exits the stomach and enters the upper part of the small intestine, your pancreas is supposed to squirt out a whole bunch of enzymes and some, some bicarbonate as well to help neutralize the, uh, the acidity. And your gallbladder is supposed to dump a load of bile 
into your small intestine. So the enzymes and the bile go into mixing with all of this food that's just exited the stomach and continue the digestive process. And again, these substances keep the environment of the digestive system inhospitable to the bad bugs. And so if you don't have enough stomach acid, which doesn't trigger enough pancreatic enzyme production, which doesn't uh, trigger enough bile release, then you can end up with a digestive environment that favors the overgrowth of the bad bugs. And guess what happens when you have the bad bugs overgrowing? Everything we've spoken about so far, you start to ferment your food, you start to produce tons of gas, you get these uh, toxins and gases being produced that then create all the bloating and, and all the other symptoms within the digestive tract. Now you can do tons and tons of things to make this process function much better. Some of them are behavioral in terms of sitting down, relaxing, not rushing your food, honoring the fact uh, that you're eating and that those foods and, and nutrients are gonna sustain your body and allow you to do what you wanna do in life. Um, you can take supplements to support the stomach acid levels. You can take pancreatic enzymes as supplements. You can take uh, herbal substances that help to, uh, to ramp up the production and secretion of all of these juices. You can support your liver and gallbladder to make sure that the bile production is optimal as well. But all of those, and while all of the, those things are really important, they're only really band-aids. You've still got to get to the underlying reasons why the stomach acid and enzymes and things have declined. Now they'll tend to decline with age, just as a natural part of life's process, but that doesn't mean they need to cause any problems. But we have to be aware of the fact that they tend to decline with age. Um, uh, because a lot of the people who come to us with bloating and heartburn and other digestive symptoms are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and the symptoms started at that time in life. Now, of course, there are younger people who have those symptoms as well, but typically um, your stomach acid production and things just does start to decline a little bit as you get older. Now, how do you test to find out what is going on here? Well, again, as I've said in previous videos, we can't talk about testing and do it justice by trying to mix it in with all of this content. So I'm gonna produce a series of videos on how you actually figure out in your own unique uh, and individual case, what pattern is actually uh, combining or what parts of the pattern are combining in your body to cause the problems. So a quick summary, if we don't have enough digestive juices, saliva, stomach acid, pancreatic enzymes and bile, then that paves the way, opens the door if you like, for bad bugs to overgrow. When the bad bugs overgrow, they create toxins, they start to ferment food, they create all of this gas and all of these horrible uh, substances that ultimately can create bloating, cause inflammation, shut down the abdominal muscles and, and leave you poof, feeling you know, like you're six months pregnant. So I hope that video has been helpful. Next time around, we're gonna look at um, uh, what we can do in terms of our diet, what good foods we can use to maybe uh, manipulate uh, the microbiome and bring the bloating levels down. So I will see you on the next video, thank you.